What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today we are back with another ranking style video, man. I am ranking every single AEW unrivaled action figure from Jazzwares in this video, man. We're going to count them down now. I said unrivaled action figures. So I do want to lay some ground rules real quick. First of all, I'm not including Chase figures. That'll probably be its own ranking someday. I'm not including the Unmatched series. This is all unrivaled. So the gold packaging, series 1 through 12. I'm taking the main eight. AEW Unrivaled line series 1 through 12 and ranking them from worst to best. So this is AEW Unrivaled series 1 with the pale skin tones all the way up to the last wave we just reviewed on the channel in series 12. No chases, no exclusives, no unmatched collection. This is every base main AEW Unrivaled action figure from worst to best in my own opinion. So let's get myself the hell out of the way. I say get the hell out of the way. And let's lay some ground rules. If you guys are not familiar with our ranking criteria, it goes excitement level for the figure, how the figure feels in hand, posability, likeness to the character on my TV, head sculpts. So with that being said, man, let's dive into it. We got 72 figures to get through, and we're starting out at number 72. And the bottom of the barrel for me, Brad, is going to be the unrivaled Series 7 Matt Jackson. This figure is an abomination. I mean, they couldn't even redeem this thing with good gear. And I'm a Lakers fan, man, but Jesus, this gear was not good. The legs are just like, I'm so tired of these tassel legs. No no wrist tape. His head sits so damn low. What is this head sculpt? I mean, look like, look at him. This figure looks like it came out in 2002, not 2022. May have been 2021. I don't remember now, but look at this guy. I mean, that hair piece is so massive. This figure is just butt-ass ugly. He's at the bottom, man. It's not, it's, it's really, I don't even know if it's close. Number 71. Dax Horwood from the same set. Series number 7 of the Unrivaled Collection is so bad, man. This figure right here, I just can't stand it. You guys know that we just recently got an updated sort of version of this figure in Series 12. This figure is just so damn plain Jane. I mean, like, look at this figure on the back. No paint whatsoever. You get a little bit of red here. That is it. Nothing on the tights. The head sculpt looks nothing like Dax. I just, I cannot stand the FTR figures right now from Jazzwares. This one easily comes in at number 71. Coming in at number 70, we have Series 3 AEW Unrivaled Series 3 Pac. This figure has no kick pad rotation whatsoever that really bummed me out. These head sculpts look atrocious. I mean, look at this guy right here. He had two different versions. He had the hair down and the hair out of the face. Look at this hand right here. This is just a figure that's not aesthetically pleasing. I, oh man, this figure right here. And I love Neville slash Pac. I love him, but good God. Number 69. Giggity. We have the Unrivaled Series 6 MJF figure. Not that this figure is just like the worst figure of all time, but it is just so like kind of lifeless. I mean, outside of the scar wrist tape, th that's where this figure ends, man. I mean, this like head sculpt's not good. Gear wasn't good. Very boring AF release. This whole series was black and gold for some reason. Like every single figure in the series had black and gold gear. It just isn't a good one. I, I don't like it. Number 68 is the Series 7 again. It is the Nyla Rose figure. Unfortunately, this Nyla Rose just doesn't look like Nyla Rose. I feel like they did this head sculpt dirty. I just, I don't like this figure. It doesn't move around well, and look at this. The peg hole's in the middle of the boot, man. There's no boot rotation, which is awful, and it, it has jacks like Titan Tron live feet, man. No ankle pivot. It cannot crunch without popping off. I mean, this figure just is not fun to pull, to pose around, man. It's just not, it's not. There is a lot of improvement that could be made right there. Number 67 is going to be Series 3 Riho. Head sculpt doesn't look like Riho, man. This figure just is not aesthetically pleasing to the eye. I think it looks more like Aubrey Edwards. I also don't like the loose skirt right here, and she has no boot rotation either. No boot rotation in my book. You're gonna fall heavily down the ranking list. This figure shelf warmed horribly for a lot of different reasons, and I honestly feel like it's too big for Riho. It's too tall for Riho. Riho's pretty tiny, and I still feel like it's oversized, so she comes in at number 67. And number 66, another Series 7 figure, Brad. It is Cash Wheeler, the other half of FTR from Series 7. I mean, just look how plain Jane these figures are, man. On the back again, nothing on the back. It's just not good. It's not good. I think they need to go back to the drawing board on the FTR figures. I really don't know what they can do with them, but they gotta do something, man, because something's not working. And so Cash, better than Dax, but not by very much. He comes in here just ahead of Riho. Number 65 is Series 7's Nick Jackson, which is definitely better than Matt, but it's still not good, man. I mean, he has like a giraffe kind of neck. 
The head sculpt is the same head sculpt from Series 1, so we're getting a repeat head sculpt from 7 Series later. No wrist tape, terrible gear again. It, the, the, the Series 7 was so damn bad, man. It just was an abomination. If we ranked AEW Unrivaled Series by, like, series, how I'm doing Elite Series 1 through 100, number 7 would be at dead last easily. Easily the worst wave of all time. Number 64 is going to be the Series number 2, Dustin Rhodes. This figure isn't, like, just the worst thing you've ever seen, but... But he's way too damn big. He's like super massive. I don't like how skinny the legs look. He cannot pose around worth a damn. Very loose abdomen. It's just not good. It's not good. It was early on the process. He he is, uh, respect the character. Glad that, that we have a figure of him. I think it's deserving, but this figure doesn't cut it for me, man. There's a lot better figures that AEW has done, and he is not near the top. Number 63 is AEW Unrivaled Series 5 Frankie Kazarian. Very plain Jane figure. One of the like shelf warming hall of fame all these figures you see back here right now these are all in the aew shelf warming hall of fame not only were the characters probably not the most sought after the figures were just so plain jane looking and this frankie kazarian doesn't do it any favors this body mold man i mean you're looking at Pac, you're looking at dax you're looking at mjf you're looking at cash a lot of them have this similar body mold he also doesn't have kick pad rotation you're gonna find that a lot also the head was oversized he came with a rubber jacket that you couldn't do nothing with it's just it's just not the best Number Number 62 is going to be Jake Hager from series number 6. I did fix this figure up. I added open knee pads. I changed out the head sculpt. I did some things to this figure, and it's still just, it was a horrid looking figure, man. A lot of people despise this figure. A lot of people probably have this one at dead last, but I enjoy Jake Hager, and I like some of the unique things they did with this figure, including the Abe Lincoln head sculpt. That's just a joke, but uh, he comes in at this spot. I couldn't put him any higher right there. Also, that hoodie stains the hell out of him, so... Yeah, that's, that's some points taken off right there. Coming in at 61, we have Lance Archer, man. This Lance Archer figure has a potato dumpling drunk Buddha body. It just looks very odd, and I think I rank this the best figure in the set, but just look at these proportions between the long skinny legs, the dumpling looking torso, the skinny ass arms, the large head. He, uh, if he didn't have some unique sculpts and look okay and like have a cool aesthetic, at least gear wise, and head sculpt wise he would have been much lower man i i mean this whole wave was a, an abomination to be honest and uh yeah it's just it's not very good man not very good he also shelf forms like hell coming in at number 60 is the hikiro shida figure from series number six this figure is not like horrifically bad, but you guys probably just saw right there. She kind of wobbles a little bit here. Uh, she also doesn't have lower leg rotation. I also feel like she was too tall, and uh, she got a little bit loose on me. And yeah, I just think that a lot of these earlier figures, like, I mean, we're still facing issues today. Don't get me wrong. There's still issues we face today in the Unrivaled line. AEW action figures have a lot of work to do, but uh, this Akira Shida was not one of my favorites so far we've seen, but it is definitely better than the rest of these. And number 59, we have the Unrivaled 10 Taz figure. This figure it can like barely move. It's like got a massive rubber bottom piece right here. And I like the head sculpts. I like having like different gears and like street gear guys. You guys know that. And I actually like posing this guy around. But at the same time, man, this is such a plain Jane figure. I mean, he has brown pants and a black long sleeve. And I, just, I, I don't know, man. You can't do much with this guy. So he's coming in at the bottom here at number 59. That's the highest I could put him on. At number 58, we have the Jake Hager from series number 10. Same series as the Taz figure. I actually like the head sculpt on this guy. They sent me... My figure actually has a backwards arm, if you guys can see that. This is a left arm on the right side here. But I didn't hate this figure. It's just very gigantic. He is so massive. The feet are massive. And I don't hate it, but it's just... It's not the most exciting figure ever, man. It's not going to move the needle a whole lot. He comes in here at the number 58 spot. Number 57 is Penelope 4 from series 11. I just don't think this head sculpt really looks like her. I think this figure could be so much better. Very flat sculpt molds. And I, I don't know, man. I'm just not a big fan of this figure. I think that there's a lot to be desired here. I think if you repainted the head sculpt and did some stuff, you might be able to fix it. But I, I'm not even the biggest fan of Penelope Ford here. It wasn't very exciting. I'm going to put her here in my ranking. At number 56, we have the Series 12 Dax Harwood. And it's not that much different. But some of the things they did with this figure is, you know, it, it beats out these other figures. I'd rather have this figure than the rest of these. And that's kind of where that comes from. You know, which figures, based on the criteria, would I rather have? And this head sculpt's terrible, but the gear's better. The boots look better. He has 
does white wrist tape so like it is a little bit better it's a little bit better than his series 7 and that gets him up to this point in the countdown this one might shock some people i'm not sure but at number 55 we have the series 8 mox figure this figure it honestly isn't that bad it's a repeat head sculpt it's very plain pants but like this guy every time i've owned this figure like look how loose this ankle is he is so damn loose that he's just awful he is just awful to, to feel in hand but uh at least aesthetically he's not that bad but you guys can already see him trying to lean over here he, he is just not fun man he gives me headaches yeah this this mox figure is just is just atrocious at 54 we have the series 12 cash wheeler very similar to the series 7 and for the same reasons that dax is up here this figure ends up here because he actually has some more paint detail he's actually got some different stuff going on with him i like the series 12 versions better than the series 7 versions and that is why they appear a little bit higher in the ranking. This one might shock some people, but at number 53, we have the Series 4 Matt Hardy. Honestly, if this guy's head sculpt wasn't so massive, if he if they didn't make him a like damn 8 foot, like this guy's taller than that Mox figure over there, if he wasn't 8 foot 8, it probably would be better, but you know, scale means a lot to me, and I just feel like this figure missed the mark in a lot of ways. Uh, I enjoy Matt Hardy a lot, but this figure is just too damn big for me. Took me out of it, and uh, for that reason, he comes in here at number 53. At number 52, we have the Series 3 Matt Jackson. Uh, another atrocious head sculpt from Matt Jackson. I mean, I love this figure from the neck down, but this head sculpt's so bad, I could not take him seriously. He has to come all the way down here at this spot for me. This one also might shock you, man, but I, I just, I, this is such a disrespectful release. At number 51, we have the Series 8 Orange Cassidy. I, I mean, a fantastic figure in the Series 3, but five series later, you're giving me the exact same figure in every single way, except you changed the graphic on the shirt. Unforgivable. Just such a, just a disrespectful for release. Like, I love the figure in every other way besides that, but, and I'd rather have this, like a repeat of this figure than the rest of these, but yeah, just nothing new on that guy really pissed me off. He's coming in here at number 51. At number 50, we have the Series 11 Jungle Boy. This head sculpt is not good. Like, neck down is okay. These head sculpts look nothing like Jungle Boy. They're also really damn massive. I mean, look how big this head sculpt is, man. And it also doesn't have very much likeness to Jungle Boy. That is the reason he's here. I do respect the release. You know, I'm glad to have a different Jungle Boy take, but yeah, he just wasn't cutting it for me. At 49, we have Chuck Taylor from series number eight. Very weird looking figure. Head sculpt was very odd. You know, he's got some interesting things going on with him. I think his leg sculpt's a bit weird. Not like my least favorite figure ever, but there's certainly better figures than him. So he comes in here at the number 49 spot. 49. At number 48, we have the series 11 Chris Jericho. Jericho in jumpsuit. You know, I, I like this figure. I appreciate the figure, but same head sculpt we've seen so many times before. It's basically a Chris Jericho in a jumpsuit. And I mean, it it gets him here in this spot, but it's not going to get him much, much higher here. That is why Chris Jericho comes in at number 48. Number 47 is going to be the Series 9 Christian figure. Very odd looking head sculpts. I hate how tiny and skinny his lower legs need. Like, look how big his thighs are, and they go into these super skinny calves. Just really, really weird proportions, man. Like, super odd looking, and he looked like he was 188 years old. So, yeah, I just, I wasn't a fan, man. Not a fan of the Christian figure. Just, it, it's, it's better than the rest, but I still don't care for that much. Number 46 is going to be the Series 1 Nick Jackson. Yes, the pale skin tones. As bad as the skin tones were in this set in Series number 1, I'm also not including Series 1B in this. If you guys were wondering, I am not including the repaints of these, only the Series 1. They were the official. As bad as the skin tones were for these, the figures and the set overall was actually pretty damn good, as you guys can see. I would rather have this pale Nick Jackson over the rest of the figures in this set. He also came with a damn good jacket. Number 45 is Chris Statlander from series number eight. Very solid figure. I enjoy Statlander. I thought this was a solid addition to the female roster for our AEW figures. I enjoyed this figure. I just think there's there's better figures than hers, unfortunately. So she comes in at the number 45 spot. Number 44, we have another women's talent. It is the Jamie Hayter from series number 12. We just covered my criteria for this figure, why it came in so low in the ranking. Uh, she can barely even move without popping off the top half, but I think the likeness is okay. I like some of the stuff going on with the figure, but unfortunately, she's not going to move much higher than she is. At number 43, we have the series 4 Ortiz figure. Very unique figure. You know, this was very early on in the Unrivaled scale. You know, he's got the inner circle shirt. Very very unique stuff going on with this guy, but 
I didn't like this rubber thing in the front. It's not a bad figure. I liked all the customization you could do with the guy with the head sculpts and stuff, but he is at number 43. At number 42, we have the Santana from the same set. I always thought the Santana was slightly better. I thought he posed around a little bit better. Again, I like the interchangeable stuff you got going on with these guys, but... At the end of the day, I like the Santana just a tiny bit more than the Ortiz. At number 41, we have the Brandy figure from series number one. This figure has actually grown on me a whole lot. I, I struggled to put her here because I think she is damn good. But at the end of the day, I think I'd rather have the figures that are in front of her over her figure. But her figure is actually really damn good. This one's probably the most underrated figure on this entire list. At number 40, we have the Series 2 Hangman figure. Not a bad figure. He had clown feet, right? I like all the different accessories he's got going with him. Like, this figure, is it's not that bad, but I did not like the clown feet. I thought that, uh, you know, it's not a bad figure. It's really not. I know a lot of people are going to have this one higher than me, but for me personally... I like other figures on this list more, so for him, he's going there. I really don't have a ton of great reasons for him being that low. And number 39, we have the Jericho from series number one. I think this is such a good Jericho. Again, if this wasn't pale skin tone, I mean, how high would he rank? You know, it's a, it's a very good figure. I enjoy this figure a lot. And I guess, I mean, I technically, I almost rank these guys like they were the 1B figures, kind of. I guess you could say that, but I don't know. I, I, I thought series one, you know, it's kind of got like a historical context to it now. At number 38, we have the series. 5 Mox figure. Not my favorite head sculpt, but I really loved the yellow camo here. You have yellow, gray, white, and black. It, it really gives you a lot of depth here. I like this figure. I wish Mox's figure was, wasn't so damn terrible to pose around and they wouldn't get so loose on you because his figures aesthetically are really damn nice, but that's about as far as they go, unfortunately. At 37, we have Ray Phoenix from series number 6. I like the white and black version of the Ray Phoenix better than the gold version, as you guys can see here. It's not a bad addition, but I think that there are better figures, so he comes in here at this spot for me. At number 36, we got the big guy. We got Brian Cage. Very fun figure to pose around here. I've never been, like, the biggest fan of Brian Cage, but this is a fun release. I think that he moves around nicely and everything like that. I, you know, I, I don't really know what else they could do to make his figure better, but for me, he comes in at this spot in my countdown. At number 35, we have the Series 1 Cody figure. So the Pale Cody comes in here at number 35. I actually like this figure a lot. It's really, like, nostalgic for me now. I think the gear's great. Uh, you know, it's like the first big-time figure on the scene here in Series 1, but I like it a lot. It's I still pick it up and pose it around to this day, and so I, I like him there at 35. I couldn't put him much higher just because of the skin tone, and the head sculpt's not the greatest of all time, but for what it is, I like it. 34, we have Series 9 Eddie Kingston. Very very fun figure. I enjoy this figure. I like the boots and the sculpts and stuff like that. He may be a little bit too big or tall and that's probably what docks him here, but I thought the likeness in the head sculpt was solid, and I, you know, I think it could be better. It definitely could be better, but I enjoy the figure for what it is, and I'm sure we'll get a better one down the line. Coming in at 33, we do have the Series 2 Ray Phoenix. Like I said, I like it better than the black and gold, so the black and white version comes in here, just ahead of Eddie Kingston. At number 32, we have Scorpio Sky from Series number 5. Very underrated figure, I think. I think it's a good representation of him. I like the head sculpt and everything like that. I think he's much better than Frankie Kazan in this set, so that definitely speaks to something. At 31, we have the Kip Sabian from series number 11. Very underrated figure as well. I, I think this is a very underrated figure. He's a bit cross-eyed and not my favorite gear of all time, but I like the tattoo sleeve. I like the likeness, and he can pose around pretty decent, so I have Kip Sabian here at number 31. At number 30, we have the OG series 1 Pale Kenny Omega. Again, it's a moment in time. It, it's, it can't go much higher than this because of the pale skin tone. Like, you gotta call it out for what it is, and it, it is a a bit stiff sometimes, but I really do like that figure a lot, and very historical figure. It, it was groundbreaking. At number 29, we have the Jordan Poole figure. No, seriously though, it's Isaiah Cassidy, Unrivaled Series 12. Very fun figure, you know, I just couldn't put it much higher because of certain things, so he comes in at number 29. Solid release for AEW Unrivaled Series number 12. At 28, we have the best figure from Series number 1. That is the Matt Jackson. I thought this head sculpt was so good. It, it's a perfect representation of Matt Jackson that I couldn't put him much higher again because of the skin tone, but if this guy had the right skin tone when it was released, I mean, this figure, I put it as the best figure in series number one. I thought the likeness was too good. This head sculpt still remains as the probably the best Matt Jackson head sculpt. It definitely has an argument, but uh, yeah, I couldn't put it much higher than number 28 in this countdown. At 27, we have the series 12 Mox. I like this figure. I know it's not the best, but the legs are tight. I know he has staining issues, but 
He has all his updates. I like the new leg mold. He doesn't feel like he's gonna, you know, just fall apart in your hands. So that counts for something for me. So Mox comes in at number 27. At number 26, we have the Thunder Rosa from series number 9. Very good women's figure. Probably the second best female unrivaled figure you'll see on this list. I love the tattoo detail. I like the head sculpts. I like the black and gold. Very good women's figure here. Number, at number 26 in the countdown. At number 25, we have the unrivaled series 4 Cody figure, which is actually, there's only two if you don't count the 1B and the chases. There are only two unrivaled Cody's from series 1 through 12. So that, I mean, like, I know we talk about how often we got Cody, and I know you got some unmatched and exclusives, but... He only had two main unrivaled line figures, not including chases. Number 24 is the Series 6 Jericho. I actually like this figure a lot. You know, it's not the best ever, but I like the head sculpt. I like the tattoos. I like the black and yellow. Very plain Jane, but I think it screams Chris Jericho. I think it's a good representation of him in figure form. At number 23, we have the other half of the Bucks in Series 3, the Nick Jackson figure. Much better than his brother's head sculpt, and this is such a good gear, and I, I love this figure. I I think it's a really great representation here. He comes all the way up into the top 23. At number 22, we have another Jericho. It is the Series 8 Painmaker Jericho with the spike jacket. Very fun figure. I thought this was awesome. I, I loved getting this released to us, and I think the jacket is, an, is a nice touch. Even though it's rubber, I think it's one of those cases where it actually works this time, so a very rare instant. Coming in at 21, we have the Trent figure from Series number 8, just edging out the Jericho. I like this figure a lot. I mean, is his torso or his chest too big? Probably, but I actually enjoy this figure a lot. I like posing him around. I like the sculpts and stuff we got on him. So I went with Trent at number 21. At number 20, we have Half Sting, Half Darby Allen face paint. Darby Allen from the Street Fight. It's grown on me. Uh, I feel like uh, it could have been better, though. You know, I really enjoy Darby Allen's figures, but for me, he comes in at number 20. I think that's a great little figure right there. Different take on Darby Allen, and you know, we get him a lot. So at number 19, we have the Sammy Guevara from series number four. Figure has grown on me a lot. It, it's very fun to pose around. He feels really good in the hand. Really good representation of Sammy Guevara. I think the head sculpt works well. Sammy Guevara is my number 19 figure. At number 18, we have the best women's figure in the Unrivaled line so far. That is the Unrivaled 10 Britt Baker. The likeness on this figure is so good. The gear is so good. This is probably her best figure. It's definitely up there. I know the Supreme's up there. You got the Pittsburgh Steelers gear and stuff, but this is a really good representation of her because of the makeup. I think they did a really good job on the face makeup, so Britt Baker comes in at number 18. At number 17, we have the unrivaled 10 Miro figure. Poses around great. Love the gear. Uh, just feels fantastic in the hand. Series 10 Miro is a very, very good figure. Series 10 overall is just a really great set. So Miro comes in at the number 17 spot. At 16, we have Mark Quinn from Series 12. Very good figure. I thought it was the best figure in Series number 12. Love the shirt. Love the head sculpt. Like the white pants. Like the shoe sculpt. Very fun addition to our action figure collections from AEW. At number 15, we have the Andrade figure from Series 10. Again, Series 10 coming in with the hot takes, man. I mean, you got the pinstripe pants. White pinstripe pants, Andrade. Poses around great. Good likeness. Great skin tone on him. I really enjoy the Andrade figure at 15. At number 14, we have the Adam Cole figure. Now, this one is... Uh, it, it, I think if I didn't love Adam Cole so much, this figure probably wouldn't be this high, to be honest. It could probably drop a few spots for sure. I just love Adam Cole so much, and uh, they probably need to go back to the drawing board on him. His figure... This figure's kind of soured on me as times went on, but I put my boy there at number 14. And number 13, we have the Series 6 Pentagon. Very good figure. Just Pentagon is such an action figure, man. Look how toyetic the man is. The black and gold is sick as hell. I mean, this guy just looks astounding. Every single Pentagon they release looks good. And what do you expect out of it, man? I mean, he's a walking toyetic beast. He comes in at 13. At 12 is another figure that really grew on me as I fixed him up, tightened up some joints, did some different things. Number 12 is the Unrivaled 5 Hangman Page. Very good figure, man. I hated that the belt was loose and the legs were really loose on me, but after I tightened up his legs, after I glued the belt to the crotch, it's become one of my favorite guys to pick up and pose around. Legs, I guess, have gotten a little bit looser over time here, but it's a very fun figure. I think it represents him very well, so I put Hangman at number 
number 12. Approaching the top 10 very slowly, man. Coming in at number 11. This is as high as this figure could go, and it could have been number one, but it's just got too many damn problems. That is Luchasaurus. Everybody that follows the channel knows how highly I held this figure. I was so excited for this figure. Probably one of the most hyped I've ever been for a wrestling action figure in my life. Aesthetically, this figure is the best looking action figure AEW's ever done, but in execution, I mean, he just, he, he refuses to stand. He can barely bend his legs. He doesn't have boot cut. So many things wrong with this figure, man. It is so unfortunate. He looks like Tarzan, but poses like Jane. You know what I'm saying? The old football terminology or analogy right there, man. Sculpt is beautiful. Aesthetic is beautiful. Could not put him any higher than 11. I mean, if you're just putting this guy on a shelf, he'll get the job done. But outside of that, man... Do not touch him. He is a posing nightmare. Number 10 is going to be Jungle Boy from series number 5. Perfect rendition of Jungle Boy. I mean, could you really get any better? Head sculpt's perfect. Likeness and body portrayal is perfect. I cut the knee pad so he can actually bend his knee now. And this guy is just... This is a very good, like representation of a character off our television. Number nine is going to be Powerhouse Hobbs from series number nine. Love this figure. It came in in one of my top figures of last year. I love this figure. I like Powerhouse Hobbs. I think the boot sculpt's nice. The sculpt on the wrist tape is nice. This is a beast. I think Powerhouse Hobbs is a, is a dope figure. And he has great head sculpts. Coming in at number 8, we have the Wardlow from series number 10. You guys know I love Wardlow. I love white gears. You put them together, you get this beauty right here. All the white, got Wardlow screaming expression. Better than the unmatched series number 2. And we're probably going to rank all of the unmatched figures as well if you guys want to see that. Obviously, we have twice as many figures here than in that video, but... Let me know if you guys want to see that down below. At number 7, we have Unrivaled Series 2 MJF. This is the, outside of the Chase Series 2, this is my favorite MJF figure, I think. I love the gear. I think the skin tone looks good. The likeness on the head sculpt is probably the best. You get the scarf. This is uh, probably the best representation of MJF we've seen, at least, uh... Especially early on. I just like the Series 2 the best, in my personal opinion, for MJF. Coming in at number 6, we have the unrivaled Series 9 Ricky Starks, man. And I'm not even a Ricky Starks fan, but the colors on this guy are beautiful. It looks just like the character on my TV. He poses around nice. I like the boots. I like the gear. I like the necklace. This guy's a beast. This Ricky Starks is really damn good, man. If I appreciate your figure and it's a character I don't really care for, that says a lot about the action figure, man. Coming in at number five, we have Pentagon from series number two. Beautiful figure. I mean, again, just like series six, this figure is so good. The black and white, great contrast. This is probably my, I don't know, the Supreme was so damn good, but this one's really damn good as well. He comes in at number five. This one might shock some people, but just spare with me. Number four is the series two Mox figure. This figure is ludicrous, man. This head sculpt is phenomenal. I wish this figure wasn't so damn loose. This is a perfect John Moxley figure aesthetically. I love the gray pants. I like all the sculpts. I think the head sculpt's perfection. They made him too tall. I did fix him up, and he's too loose, but he's still such a good representation of Bach. And so he comes in at the number four spot. Coming in at number three is from series three, and it's going to be the Orange Cassidy. This figure has so much innovation in it. I love the hand and pockets feature. I love the likeness of the figure. I think it's a great representation of Orange. Great jacket. Again, the hands in the pockets gimmick. Obviously, him not being able to pose around is a definitely a big deal. But I don't think you need it for this specific figure. Now, when we get the next Orange Cassidy, do not do the uh, the hands in the pockets gimmick, man. Give a sculpted pants so you can pose around and do the rest of it. But I love this figure when it released. I think it's so great. It's very unique. Groundbreaking technology with that figure. I love it. Coming in at number two is the Series 3 Darby Allen figure. If you guys have Darby Allen figures, you know how well these pose around and feel in the hand. I love this Darby Allen. All of his figures are fantastic. Great likeness, great posability. Feel in hand is great. It's just a beast. It's so good. If you guys don't own a Darby Allen, track one down. This one is the number two figure out of all of the unrivaled figures so far. And the number one figure for me personally out of the entire AEW main unrivaled line series 1 through 12 is going to be the unrivaled series number four, Kenny Omega. This figure is so damn good. 
Such an upgrade from Series 1. This is the figure. Now, again, we're not counting on match, but this is such a figure that is held in such high regard, man. This is my favorite unrivaled figure. The vest is great. The gear looks so damn good. I mean, they made the gear look better in figure form than in actual real life. Great likeness. He has the shooter hand. Great posability. Great feel. It is undoubtedly the number one unrivaled figure that Jazzwares has made so far, man. I, I love that Kenny Omega. I love it. It is, it is so good, so, so good. I love it so much. I wish I could rank Supreme figures as well, but we only have, what, like six or seven of them, maybe eight. And so I can't do that, but if you guys want to, we can rank the unmatched figures. One day we can take all the, you know, all six or seven series of unmatched and rank them just like this. But I want to know down below where you guys stand on my rankings. I had a ton of fun with this. You guys know that I love ranking figures. If you guys don't mind, please leave a like on the video and comment down below. At the very least, leave a like so it pops the video up. And video took a long time to make, so I greatly appreciate it. But I think that pretty much wraps up my ranking of every single AEW Unrivaled action figure from worst to best. I'd love to know where you guys stand down in the comment section below on these. But before we get out of here, huge shout out to our patron army. Thank you guys so very much for supporting the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts on all these things down in the comment section below, man. I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. We'll never back down. We will not relent.